Death Core, what's up, man? What's How's happening? going, everybody? Uh, let's see. So, like I said on our last stream, we're going to switch it up to uh, Nogi stuff today. And let me actually update the stream info. And then, uh, if we make it through fast enough, uh, we might throw in some key footage from uh, this week as well. So, let's, uh, let's see if you guys kept everything super busy. We might just focus on Nogi, so let's get started. Busy session. Yeah, yeah, there were a ton of people on the mats. Got Danny laying some heavy pressure on Austin's face right now. Yep. Got Mitch and Duncan, Matt and Brandon, and Pat and Joe. Yep. Right? Okay. Now James and Steven. This was this past Monday, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I gotta get James' thumb drive back. I have it in my bag. I couldn't train on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. A lot of hand fighting here with uh, James mm -hmm. and Steven. Nice double. Nice. And good recovery from James. Very, yeah. Duncan is fighting for that, uh, to not tap to that Americana that, uh, Mitch has. Oh, uh, looks like he got him with it. Yep. I didn't see the setup. Oh, okay, so he set it up from, uh, kind of from a case, it looks like. Yep. But he's, I mean, he's doing the right thing and turning to it. He's just in a yep. bad spot at this point now. Mm -hmm. Mitch is exercising a bit more influence over the shoulders, getting the leg over the head. Yeah, and he can he can switch that into an arm bar uh, on the near near side arm at any point. Yeah. What is? It? <laughs> it looks like Danny's almost hitting a can opener on Austin right now. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's really trying to swing his leg over for the, uh, and that's where the footage cut out. Uh, but um, yeah, I think he was trying to go for the um, just a triangle. Mm. But we'll never know how it turned out. Oh well. Oh, Danny and Justin, okay. Mm -hmm. We got Jason and James down here. Ronnie and Steven. Steven in on a nice little arm bar. Did it, was that, he hit that flying. Yeah, he just pulled, uh, pulled yeah. Veronica down into it. Ronnie. See, he, he got he got her with this two uh, today. Um, you know, I mean, hold it. Allow the arm to go in deep enough. It's very difficult to get out. Yeah, and I, like, see what grip he had here. So he had a wrist grip. Okay. That's interesting. I, I really like that from, uh, like, a, like, the bicep tie, like an outside bicep tie. So do I. What's up, Ronnie? He's just using... <laughs> Using Five. like a hoagie. Yeah, yeah. Well, Danny got the triangle. Danny got it. Okay. Can't say I'm surprised. Wasn't on a film, doesn't count. Zip. Ronnie getting his back. Mm hmm. Oh. I love that he's looking for that. Yeah. That roll, th kind of roll through knee bar, or really a roll through leg entrance. Just yep, knee bar is yep. one of the good options there. Yeah, so much going on. <laughs> wow, Brandon he... and Duncan had a really good. Brandon had a really good um, transition. Check it out. It's 
Brands and Mount. Yep, but then Duncan does a really good job of getting uh, of initiating an elbow escape, and Brandon uses a, a good amount of chest to chest pressure to, you know, put his chest onto Duncan's chest and use his legs lightly to walk around the guard. Mm. It's really nice. Hey, nice I'm still doing a good job. Well, he he was a second ago keeping Duncan's knees pointed away. Knees but, pointed, but yeah. Duncan got the best of it. Yeah, and I mean, Duncan, you know, kudos to him too, because this is something that he's been focusing on uh, as of the past uh, couple of few weeks here is is really his mount and, and side control escapes. So yeah. uh, he's doing a great job getting his knees and his, his frames in the right spots. Ronnie got out of that triangle. James and Jason leg hunting. Wow. Jason was stepping over for the knee bar and then James went for a knee bar of his own. Um, oh, down here in the corner? Yeah, bottom left. Yep. Before that, Jason uh, dove over oh. from half guard here. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so he got his knee across, his leg was dangling behind there, and James ah. astutely picks up on it and goes, and James or, and then Jason again astutely knows he's in danger, so he starts pushing on the hips and clearing his knee line. Yeah, that was great great uh, leg back leg lock defense from Jason yeah he read that well and then Steven gets a, a nice little uh, duck under here against Ronnie oh yeah very nice way to follow through ooh and the, sta <laughs> the standing rear naked how was Austin's uh, top uh, high guard was garbage tough to <laughs> garbage and it did nothing so i'm looking at this in real time i just the uh i wanted to catch that duck under one more time so yeah that was like i like this i like the grip he's got here this outside grip um mm -hmm. at the elbow and then quick level change let's watch his legs here okay drops his knee cuts his angle on the other side yeah and then just follows through on it mm -hmm. it's really good um, yeah, Austin's. I, I I don't take his uh, I don't take his high guards uh, lightly anymore. So when I when I start to feel that it's, uh, I typically try to posture. I don't I don't necessarily. I guess I'm uh, thinking about it now. I don't worry too much about the standing guard break until I get his his high guard back down closer to my waist. Right. Right. I'm, I'm primarily focusing on, uh, I guess, just on getting my posture back um, and not so letting. What are you trying him... to do to get that guard down lower? Are you just trying to make him move? Or... Just posturing up, yeah. I mean, like, like yeah. continually driving up through as best, I... <clears throat> excuse me, as best I can, and keeping really, really tight elbows to my waist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I shoved him into the wall here, just because. <laughs> But yeah, if, if I if I ignore that high guard and start to work my standing guard break against him, I don't have enough confidence in it to uh, to work. Like I mean, I always I always emphasize on that on the standing guard break to get like stand up like you're just standing there, like you're yeah, you know, like you're standing there normally, and there's not a guy trying to trying to pull you back down. When when he has that high guard, that's you know impossible to do. So I don't bother trying it until I get out of that. On the front headlock. Almost looked like Ronnie tried to hit like a Maki Komi there or, or 
or whatever. Actually, it's not a. It's um. It's called an udigeshi, I believe. Where you kind of where you hold that arm. See how she uh grabs the elbow right there. Oh, and then to, f- to try to sit yeah. through from that standing position. Gary yeah. Gary Tonin yeah. has like some really great highlight reels of this where he just makes guys face plant, but he. Yep. You typically want to, you want to like throw your leg this way. Like you really want to sit out and then look in the direction that your opponent's going to go. Um, but that grip uh, right there is crucial. Like that's that's a good spot to hold um, to try to hit that. Yeah, he does that as like the guillotine escape, right? Yeah. The front lock escape, yeah. Yep. Yes, it has a name, Ronnie. It's an Udi Geishi, U D E. Geishi, figure it out. So Joe's trying to set up a mounted triangle on Pat there by the pillar. Oh, snap. Let's see how we got there. It's been laying on some really heavy pressure this whole roll. I've just kind of been glancing back over trying to scan. Really good. Yeah. I, I yeah, really nice. this this looks great. Like like what he's doing with his uh with his based arm here. Yeah. Even even to get that leg up and over. Um back a little bit further. Right? He he really focuses on on shifting his weight. To where he needs it to be to get his uh, right leg mobile. So he's probably gonna. It looks like he's sitting a little heavy on Pat, and and has some weight over his left foot here. But that's that's making his light or his uh, his right leg lighter, right? Sneaks it in, and then watch how he just kind of walks his arm up, walks his arm up, gets himself nice and steady. And now he's looking to get the uh, the triangle lock itself. That's yeah, great. It's very calm, calm yeah. and controlled. Like yeah, that. exactly. Just super, super controlled, slow, not giving up any uh, any space there. Can you back up? I want to see what how Matt got to. Uh, <laughs> I just saw that. Mitch, Mitch is back. All right, so he's on. He's got top position here. Which I'd also like to see how he did that, but we can redo that some other time. Okay, so Mitch is Slow trying. Down. Is trying like a looks like Mitch was trying to roll him. Yeah, kind of like a fat man roll, but not quite. But he yeah. only has the right Matt's right shoulder locked up here, yeah. right? So That's so right. Matt Matt has no. I mean, like his his head isn't folding under his chest or anything like that. So his hips are nice and nice and light. Yep, and just slips right over. And then yep. gets the yeah, gets the belly down. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to know how he got to the back. Yeah. They were talking about that on Friday. Mitch was like, "Man, I still feel that." If yeah, I mean, anybody who's been caught belly down and can't get up, that's a terrible feeling. I I don't even wait at that point. Yeah. I just tap. It's like because it like it hurts your spine. Like it, it's just not it does. fun. I don't think anything else got jacked up with the footage, so I think it should be good to go. Sweet. That was a nice dance you had with Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steven and Austin going over the Hindu yep. uh, Hindu guillotine. Guillotine, yep. That Sometimes weird, do it. the weird grip. Yeah. I don't want Austin to know how to do this. I know, right? <laughs> 
I'm gonna be so pissed if any of you tap me with that. <laughs> Don't Just... worry, it won't be me. My knees won't bend. <laughs> yeah, my right. knees won't bend like that anymore. Yeah, I'm only rolling with guys who wear knee braces at this point. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's such a weird... I just I just say, get good at your guillotine. Danny on a heel hook. He's... <laughs> and Joe oh, rolled his ass into the pillar. Good. But, yeah, right. That was that was <laughs> really great uh, reaction from Joe, though. Going the right way. Going the right way. It looks like... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's feeling comfortable with it. Um, that's good. Good reactions. Just got to work on... Remember that the whole point of that roll is working on getting your knee extracted, right? So that's where using... Yeah, it looked like he if, if they had kept rolling, I think he would have started using his free leg to, uh, yep. to help extract his other one. <laughs> I'm so glad that that, that pillar is padded. Sure, Danny's more thankful than me. <laughs> okay. That's a... Just yanking each other around. Yeah. Austin was trying. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, what I mean, what I hate about it is right here. He had a guillotine, right? He yeah. had an arm in guillotine. That's like that's what I'm saying. I mean, I, and and I'm not I'm not dogging on Austin for this, but like don't give up those those you know, good old classic variations for uh for some new hotness. Right. Had a nice arm triangle. Katagatame. Mm. Wow. Sets it up. Drives his head down. And Danny's in on something here, too. Looks like Danny's in on a Dars. Dars. So let's see how Danny got to that. Probably from the pass. Working from a half guard. Yep. Gets the pass. Almost he into steps a, over the head. Yeah, he's in like a dorsal position here. With the underhook. Well, not really an underhook, but. So Joe, okay. So yeah, Joe gets his head out. Looks like he's starting to try to get back to like a side guard. And then, yeah, Danny just too familiar with that spot knows exactly what to do remember when Danny like first learned how to do Darces mm -hmm. and we were all like shit this is gonna be bad <laughs> yeah Reason be so I guess good stuff from James and Danny Oh, Austin was almost on like a. I know. The figure four top lock. That's the second time Brandon has gotten a takedown on James. I don't know whether. How is he setting it up? Just a, a good arm drag. Right to the back. And then, you know, good mat return. And Step then James is rolling straight through it. Yeah. But he does not have the underhook. Yeah, it looks like... When he's doing that. Yeah, Brandon's got the underhook here. 
Okay. Um, and Danny hit a nice little sweep. Oh, look at that. Kind of in, a, in an attacking position. Joe responds. Gets into the open guard. And then Danny here. This is kind of an interesting scissor sweep variation, right? We normally see the, you know, this leg would be kind of up in the armpit. Yeah, moving moving the shoulders over. But Danny's using more of a, a butterfly variation. Yep. So, I mean, I guess you could call that a hook sweep. Um, you just normally see it's like a, a combination of the two because he's got this leg on the outside, the outside, yeah. like a scissor sweep, but then the mm -hmm. the butterfly hook, like a typical hook sweep. Right into Stephen and Austin. Stone Cold Stephen and Austin. they do what did I miss they just keep knocking into each other I was yeah. my shoulder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Steve and Austin are just like I guess we'll pause yeah who is hitting a shoulder crunch James on Brandon <clears throat> just kind of floating really light doing a great job bugging the base there too right just kicking yeah. kicking the legs out hitting that double koji but more more at the knees i guess just because brandon's uh he was at his knees kind of extended rather than right. standing in. Mm -hmm. yeah so brandon's coming in and then i think this is where James gets the underhook. He kind of has a shoulder crunch slash head and arm. I can't really tell. Either way, he takes um, Brandon's base away. Yeah. And it looks like it's putting a decent amount of pressure on the shoulder. And it's coaxing him into yeah, falling onto that side. That grip was like, because like Brandon's head kind of looks like it's peeking out of there. Yeah. So it's like the grip is over top of the head, but not not at the neck. So it's not right. not so much controlling the head. But I mean, you know, the crucial thing he's got his arm, his arm is prevented from basing out right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just kind of takes him right over. And then Brandon just took him right back. game back at him. Danny and Joe were going. Yeah, I, hook for I missed hook. a bunch of that. Good job by Joe. Joe to... Nice. Yeah. And then Danny recognizes that his leg is left out and he's got full yeah. control over the knee. Yeah. And then right into the outside. What is that? I don't know. That was a that was a killer little exchange. Yeah, man. Agreed, Deathcore. Monday's always so active. I 
actually, you know what? I want to go. I want to look at this thing with Joe and Danny again. I feel like I need to give Joe some props here, because I. So we spent. This was um, the beginning of the second week of legs, and like a big, you know, a big theme of that is is uh, you know the importance of off balancing to open up to these leg exchanges, and uh, like he's got this. I can't see what his what Joe's own leg configuration is right now, but he's the way he's scooped up on this leg and is taking Danny over and away to make Danny's legs light and easier to attack is absolutely crucial. And then immediately he like he knows he knows he's got something here, so he's swinging that leg over. He just made the mistake of le leaving that other leg behind for Danny to uh, to counter on. And I by now he obviously knows that. Um, but just to figure out which way to go. Yeah, and that's so that's a tough one too, right? This in this case, like I don't know, Danny's Danny's configuration here seems a little weird to me. I it's can't outside <clears throat> it's outside Ashi. It is, it is. But it's like in it's like inverted, right? Because normally, like if you rotated Danny around Joe's leg. And took him out of this backside position. Um, it would, you know, it would look very different. Maybe it's, I don't know. I, I don't. I guess it's I don't. Backside fifty-fifty like... is what people are calling this backside fifty-fifty. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't I guess spend backside too much 50 time. Fifty would be if if uh, if Danny passed the leg over to his left side, then he would have an in, he would have a, an inverted or an inside heel hook. Yeah. You know, and he would have to turn to his right hand side to break. Yeah. Yeah, so if, if Joe backstepped, you know, this foot yep. over, he'd be doing okay in doing that. He wouldn't be breaking his own leg here. Um, It'd be the knee bar that you'd have to watch out for in that case. Right, yeah. And then if he if he tried to turn... That's what I'm saying. Like, And if he tried to turn this way, yep. I don't necessarily think he'd be... He'd break in, his own leg. Would, yes, yeah, you're right, you're right. Totally. That just clicked. Okay. Yeah, the, I, so the right thing to do, here's my, my take on it, right? My take is the first thing that I would be doing in this position is getting to my knees if I were Joe. And I'm trying to get, you know, by doing that, it makes it easier to get my left knee clear of Danny's hips. <clears throat> so I would be abandoning the leg that Joe is attacking right now, getting up to my knees and trying to get out um, of that position because you don't really have anything um, unless you can rotate to your right hand side, like you mm -hmm. were saying, which would break your own leg. So that would be a bad option, a bad option. Yeah, and with with your own free foot here, Joe, like if you can get this foot to find this grip, like any yeah. any anytime you can get your feet together in a leg lock, it really inhibits his ability to finish that that break. Um, what you know a, a common a common defense you'll see on uh, well from either one right on on like an outside ashigarami where the guy's triangles you know on the outside of your hips he's attacking an outside heel hook. You do that same thing when you try to bring that free foot behind the back to get it to to get it to meet your other foot um from across ashigurami you often see guys do that um I'm trying to think or maybe i'm thinking 50 50 uh i don't know i'm getting them all jumbled up in my head right now but you'll you'll have you'll have your opponent you know bringing his foot in and wedging it in next to his other foot which makes it really difficult to uh to get a finish um and then to even isolate the leg again um Danny said in the chat that it looks like an inside heel hook and and I'm that's I think that's where I was getting confi like just wrapped up cuz like if you think about a standard inside heel hook like if you just extended your own leg right now and pointed your your toes inward that would actually be an outside heel hook right and if you look at Joe's foot his toes you know if we'll we'll just say like this is approximately Joe's center line his toes are pointing towards the center line. So it's, it's more of an outside heel hook, even though 
the way Danny you're you're holding on to it right now looks and or feels more like an inside heel hook that's that's again where I was getting confused so you really just have to look at which way Joe's foot is pointing if his toes point away from him it's an inside heel hook um, yeah backside's all it's a pain in the ass to navigate and, and <clears throat> where we have like the cross ashi 50 50 um, and outside ashi positions like people still don't agree on the nomenclature for the backside so, yeah I think backside 50 50 is the only one that people know about or like that can that you can like confidently say that's backside 50 50 right yeah <laughs> everything else is getting its own own new names yeah but yeah facility I think like I think people come off of the weekend you know it's Monday they have a day at work they decide they're gonna go go to the school blow off some steam they go hard Tuesday rolls around and they're like yeah I really put in the work yesterday I don't think I'm gonna go on Tuesday which is <laughs> which is why we we kind of we don't get to show as much Tuesday footage because the the crowd isn't as big on on Tuesday open mats so it's a lot a lot less a lot less footage and it often turns into like more of a uh, technique drilling session um, than a giant active open mat like this Mitch is just dogging me this whole round Steven got a knee bar yes he did going on Joe Joe's poor knees have been under significant attack. There, there you go. Joe's, Joe's using his second foot to attack rips now. That's right. Just yeah, just like I was talking about. Let's, let's look at that again. And let's go back a little further. See how he steps around. So Joe, Joe goes to reverse De La Hiva. De La Hiva. Oh, I'm sorry, regular De La Hiva. Yep. Which is always a fun spot to sit in on a knee bar. Yep. Which Stephen knows. Yeah, Joe doesn't know when to when to quit. He's too dumb for his own good. What did what did uh what do you think the marketing company did for you guys? Just out of curiosity, was it like largely social media driven or um, other more traditional forms of marketing? all that matters right get your money's worth Jason and Duncan Austin is on a rear naked on James yeah I thought I thought that's what that was and James is holding out James has been infuriating to hit rear naked strangles on lately yeah his 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 hand fighting up top is uh is really well dialed in He's just slowly and methodically trying to get his shoulders down to the back. Yeah, and it's working now, at this point. Yep. Yeah, Austin has lost the back at this point. Very little he can do to reclaim it. Yeah, facility, you can send it over, man. I, those aren't shots that we call. Um, I could pass it along to the owners, see what, see if they care. We've largely grown by word of mouth. Um, you know, it's it's been a slow, steady growth for us, which has been really great. But yeah, shoot it over to me. I'm I'm just kind of interested. <laughs> James is right on a straight ankle. Yep. So let's He's see how that. It. Okay. So it was a closed guard. James is working a standing guard break. I want to see where Austin went wrong here. I think it's just because he... Okay, so he opened his guard, but he didn't pull his legs down in time. Yeah. Yeah, James got a nice little twist on that. What is up with Joe and Steven? 
He's got Joe has a trap triangle. He needs to convert to the uh, to a, to locking up his legs. <coughs> you look away for one second. These guys are just at each other's throats. Yeah, yeah, he's he is stuck on that the ankle cross. He's got he's got the, a good way. He's got a good angle, a really good angle. He could underhook the leg instead of overhook the leg, but yeah, the angle is the angle. It doesn't matter how you're hooking, right? Yeah, and I'm curious what his grip is on the trapped arm, because again, like if he's not, uh, if he's not ready to switch over on that triangle, or if he can't, right? Like if he just can't lock his legs up into the triangle, he probably has a pretty Break killer arm. arm bar. Yeah. Yeah. Like he just slipping that knee right over the face, and he'll be yep. he'll be set. Oh, uh, looks like he gets there. Oh man. I... I just want to see, like, I want to see that leg right. I don't want to see Steven's head at all. Over the head, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would be. Pushed away. That would be perfect. I mean, it looks, uh, yeah. Dang, he slipped it, yeah. Yeah, he just didn't have enough control over the head and shoulders. But it was, it was Good right there, man. If, Joe, if you're watching it, take note of that because you were, yeah, you were right there. Chase, it's got a nasty little standing guillotine. There we go. Very nice. Let's see this again. Jason and Duncan over here. Coming off a snap down, maybe? Yep. I just... uh, not even much of a of a snap. Just kind of, I think Duncan getting a little lazy. getting his Letting his head get a little low. Crown of his head got below uh, Jason's armpit. And Jason just took full advantage. So now... Duncan, you got to get this arm over top of this shoulder. I, I'm pretty sure. Like I know we went over this recently, recently within the last month or so. Like the kind of the old Gracie style guillotine defense. Yep. Um, so definitely right the arm over yeah. left arm into the hip, elbow into the hip, guarding the choke. You know, like defend the choke with the left hand. Yeah. Elbow in the hip. Right hand over top, break the posture down. Yep. Right. This shit works. I mean, it does. <laughs> I think I did it to I did that defense against Luke one time, and he he just picked me up and spiked me onto the ground. Yeah. He was like, "Well, I'm not going to strangle you now, so I may as well just bounce you off the mat." Ooh, look at the that shoulder crunch setup from Steve. Yeah. You see that? I did. Let's look at that again. So he gets he gets Joe down into in like a four point position, and then it says, "All right, I'll take the arm." Yep. Let's see what he can do with it. Trying to sweep to the right. Nice. Got it. Bit of a kind of like a pendulum uh, sort of yeah. movement there. Not as not as clean as a, as like a standard pendulum sweep because Joe's legs were. Like his hips were up and his legs were back, but it kind of, kind of kipped into it, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! Jason and uh, and Duncan are going over that now. I think Jason was just showing him exactly what happened there. Yeah, that's regarding that that uh, guillotine from Duncan and Jason. Let's go back to that real quick. Just just another little point of note here um, in the setup. So for Duncan, right, right here. This is this is where it all goes wrong, right? Your posture is very poor here. You're looking at the floor, right? You want to look through. Jason's chest like forehead facing him um, a nice neutral spine you know Jason is broke with his collar tie I'm assuming he's broken down your posture and got you looking down and that's that's where that's where that starts to go wrong again like right here right into the setup 
you know, you got this rounded back, you're and you're looking at the ground. Try to always look through your opponent, right? Just like when you're when you're a boxer, you know, they talk about punching through, you know, aim for the back of your opponent's head. You know, go through the front, aiming for the back of the head. Um, look through your opponent, and that'll that'll help keep your posture nice. And I don't want to say I don't want to say rigid, because like you do need to like move, um, but it'll keep you from getting broken down like that. And having having those really simple guillotine entrances uh, happen on you. So wait, Steven. Steven gets the sweep. There we go. And he's in on his first triangle. Oh, it looks like Veronica shook it. Steven on the mounted Americana. Uh, deep half guard sweep on Justin on the left hand side. Had the lockdown. Was able to swim underneath for the far leg. Oh, yeah, I see now. Nice. Yeah. That's, I, I like that sweep just in how slow it is. Like, uh, uh, fast moves, fast dynamic moves are great and they make, make for great highlights, but a good slow controlled move that your opponent knows is happening and can't shut it down is just that much more dominant in my opinion obviously you don't want to like waste too much energy but Free with Brandon. Sweet. He's really digging those Zumpas. Yeah, those. they work for him. I mean, just like his body type alone, like lends itself to really powerful bridges. Like his bridge can get right. so high, you know. Yep. You were able to take him over with a sweep. Yeah, what did, what did I use? I think just uh, I think yeah, I just a shoulder simple. crunch, maybe. Yeah, what like a head in, shoulder crunch grip, mm -hmm. weave my leg in. It's like a flower. Yeah. Yeah, start to, and then I just had to commit my hips to it. Yeah, Mitch sucks. It's been really fun watching him and Matt train. Or even, I mean, him and Luke still have great matches. But yeah, just to, fun to watch. Yeah, just to see not only how, how, like, expertly he uses his wrestling, but also how he's adapting to the jiu-jitsu game and, like, getting comfortable from spots where, you know, wrestlers normally have nightmares. You got a trap triangle on Brandon. Yeah, cutting my angle. Switch to an armbar. Nice. So Mitch is on an armbar too. His legs were in a weird spot though. Like... Yeah, I didn't quite have control over the shoulders. So this was, I remember when this happened, I, I actually felt really good about this with Brandon, but like a lot of people, myself included, have trouble like spider walking the hand up to isolate the arm. And this was just one of the slowest ratcheting like attempts I'd ever done. I was slowly walking, extend my arm, 
slowly walking, extend my arm. And then I get maybe three more extensions out right here just to get the arm up nice and nice and high. And then now I start walking it up over the head. And I, I mean, I don't even think I necessarily, I don't remember what I did with this, but that little bit of the technique alone in isolating the arm, um, that's one of those moments where you're just like, that felt good, that worked, you know? <laughs> this thing I've been right. I've been trying to do for, or trying to get better at for months and months finally, finally clicked in. The neck out. I think Jason, Jason and Justin have like a, Justin hit a sweep here or something. Okay. Looked like Jason was going for an arm bar. I, I, yeah, he's trying to yeah, think? step over, pull arm bar. Yeah, like pull him on top of you, arm bar. Yeah. And then Justin's able to scoot right around. Yeah, th there's just there's just not a lot of control in the in that that entry. I mean, Justin Justin has full mobility of his uh, of his hips there. Kind of falling back as Jason, like uh, when you're doing that. Brandon was was fighting really hard on uh on the hand fight here, so I had to. I was switching his head from side to side, and mm -hmm. just decided I, I couldn't hit the the guillotine from that position. So mm -hmm. use a transition instead. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know how much people think about this, but like it's a simple a simple idea to keep in mind. Like any any failed quote unquote failed submission is really just an opportunity to control somebody. Um, like with that with that guillotine. I'm sorry, I'm like well, talking but looking at what Matt's doing to wreck Steven's leg right now. Um, right up here. But yeah, you you can always like use especially a guillotine like if it's not working you don't just let it go you use it to transition your spot you know uh work to the back work back to mount if you if you need to um you don't just let it go and reset sometimes you know like with an arm bar someone slips the arm you might have to just start over right um but with a guillotine you often have really good chances to to maintain or advance your position, even if you don't get the submission. Is that a heel hook, Steven? Looks like it from the. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a huge difference, Ronnie. It's um. It's it's, you know, like when you're when you're first beginning, like, you, you feel that like dejection of oh, I was so close, I almost had something. Mm -hmm. It's like well, you did have something, you just gave up on it, and the something wasn't necessarily a submission, but it was still a. A really, really good opportunity. Yeah, I think there's like as you start, <clears throat> as you recognize that, then you also realize the whole "don't go down with the ship." Yeah. Mentality, right? Don't hold on to it so long to where you can't get to a dominant position that yeah. you're, you know, falling to your back and <clears throat> ending up in a in a worse spot. You know. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I go ahead. I was just say that's just something else that you have to learn along the way when right. you can do it and when you know what is a risky move and what you're going to be fighting out of uh, versus you know like the guillotine is a very good submission to advance position mm -hmm. armbar that's a, a, a different story right like you should be able to chain that together with the triangles the omoplatas and so on right um, to and you gotta like time that perfect to get to a, an advantageous position if you lose the submission. 
Yeah, I don't know if it was back when we were training out of, out of Gold's Gym. I, I feel like that was a little too early when I knew Ronnie, so I probably wouldn't have yelled at her really bad. But, like, yeah, there definitely was a time where I was just like, what are you doing? Why did you give that up? Like, you almost had me or you almost advanced your position. Like, why did you give that up? Just, like, let her have it one day. That's how you know I love you. Also, during all that talking, um, I don't know. I mean, Matt's been training with us now for like a few months. And I, I feel like early on, we didn't see a lot of leg locking coming from him. Like it wasn't a big part of his game initially. Maybe because like when you started a new school, you know, you don't want to go out leg locking everybody. Kind of a, kind of a faux pas. Um, so maybe we're just seeing him doing it a lot more that way. Or he's just like trying a lot of new stuff. Or, or stuff he's known and is just, like, honing it and everything. But, like, he had, like, killer entrances on Steven. Um, yeah. And some great finishes here, too. Like, I think, yeah, I think this was it. Just... Chin on chin. Straight into Ashi. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just the way he, uh... The way he got him off balance. Isolated the leg. Like, fall, see, he's falling to his right shoulder. Goes right up into, like, an Arimi Ashi. Scoops that leg. He's going into X guard when he scoops under like this. He's got X. Then he goes to reverse X. Extending. He's in that uh, get up now. Yeah, just a good X guard sweep, right? Good chains. Yeah, like you're saying, good, good chaining. <clears throat> you show me a submission. From guard or side control. I can't remember what's going Lay down, mounts me, says okay if I'm in your position, what submission? So he was death court, he was mounted on you and then said, Alright, if you're mounted, like how how would you attack him if you were in bottom position in a mount? Is that am I reading that right? Because he sounds super fresh and doesn't quite understand the concept. <laughs> yeah. You see Mitch. Mitch needs to. Mitch always plays to the camera, and I love it. We got to get a comp, get a compilation of his uh, his bullshit. Yeah, he sounds uh pretty fresh. Not not quite understanding how much danger he's in. You could have just reached up and started tickling him, making him really uncomfortable. I forgot what Brandon and I were discussing here. He had a he had a good question about. Oh, I it was it was. We were in this position. I had a mount on him, and I was switching over into a a mounted armbar. So I I was switching over like I would have brought my leg over the head. And we were talking about when to escape. Mm. You know, it's such a it's such a late stage, uh, yeah. spot to be in, right? So what I was what I was saying to him was on the step over whoops, let me get my arrow back. On the step over of this leg, right? This foot of mine, when I go over to isolate his head, that would be his time to try to slip the elbow right there. Right? Yep. So now he has the opportunity. He's got two arms out, and that's his that's his opportunity to go out the back. But it comes it comes with a like you kind of you have to have a good grip at that like your hands ideally want to be together you know um so we spent some time going over that that's just such a late stage spot those are always the hardest escapes a good way to th to think about that is how much of the finishing mechanics of a submission has your opponent gone through and whatever he has left to do are your opportunities for escape right so in that case i had to step over to isolate the the head and extend and break the arm so what can he do to disrupt that step over what could he do to to disrupt you know the extension of the arm those are those are kind of that's why it's that's why it's um you know you're running out of options at that point those are the two, those are two things off the top of my head that i could think of um that you have to disrupt 
you have a lot more that you can disrupt earlier on in that mount position, right? Um, so fold that in with, with some of your uh, submission escape strategies. It's all good, man. Keep getting armbarred and triangled, and you'll be impossible to armbar and triangle in, uh, yep. in short order. That's how it happens. So Joe just kind of like spider monkeyed his way up into this. Little collar tie. Ah, okay, cool. So check out Joe's grip here. He gets a cross wrist grip on Justin right here. Yep. That opens up the back. Right, yanks around. Yep. Sinks in the strangle he immediately. Switches. Yeah. Switches that cross wrist grip to the strangle. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Then jumps on top. And Justin, what you can do there is just like whip Joe's face right onto the ground. <laughs> and render him unconscious. I'm just kidding, we don't do that at our school. Just do it. Awesome. Unless you're Danny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and let's see what Cole and Steven are up to. I missed the beginning of this engagement here. Steven's turtled up. Half Nelson. Yeah, half Nelson by Cole. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't folding the head underneath, but he had that, that weave under the half Nelson like weave under the arm. All hyped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Whose face did you bounce off from that? Your own doesn't oh, count. No, the kid who never came back. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that, that was great. <laughs> Joe, or, uh, Cole is really close to a, an arm triangle there. I I guess he got it. I don't know. It looked like footage jump there. I think they reset. Yeah, just a little. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I was doing my damnedest with James to not let him get into a top position again. He had a like a front headlock on you, and I didn't see how that all turned out. Uh, let's go find it. Here, here. <clears throat> so he reaches up, gets that. That was nice. Doesn't get his hips out. You're trapping his hips and and trying to. You yeah. got on the cross side of his body, so you're you're safe. Yeah, so th I think, I think you and I were talking about this the other day, um, like guillotine defense, right? And this is a very, very new concept to me. Um, that, again, rip totally ripping it off of like Danaher stuff, but the idea, you know, in a guillotine, we're always told first things first, protect your neck, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to lead you guys astray from that idea. It's a very safe idea. Um, but in no gi, especially, you can consider con uh, controlling the person's legs first, right? Because we all know if you get if you're in a guillotine and you go cross side, you're safe, right? They're mm -hmm. they're not gonna finish that. They're just gonna like hold on tight. They're gonna leave themselves open to von flu chokes and things like that. So, you know, these strangles take time, and you can use that time to navigate over to a, a better spot where you know you're avoiding a high elbow guillotine you're avoiding the leg over your back so while you know grabbing grabbing at the neck and using both hands to pull down is is great and it'll keep your neck safe it won't necessarily immobilize your opponent's legs right and they can they can um in turn immobilize your hips so he gets to strangle okay immediately Focus on getting around the legs, getting to cross side, then focus on the grip fight, right? Um, that's what I'm ex like experimenting with a bit more as you guys try to try to hit guillotines and stuff on me. And you'll notice I'm doing that with James here. 
right? He's got this guillotine. I don't care about the grips. I'm immediately focusing on getting around the legs, which I do here. And then once once I'm by, you know, now I now I feel like okay, I can I can focus on other things. I think I threw in a guillotine or just like a front headlock on him to, to keep him down. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just I I don't know. I again like I'm not encouraging everybody to just let people strangle them now while they focus on hips. But it's a concept that I think once once I get much more comfortable with, um, I'll probably completely focus on things that way. That's a nice pass. I like I like what you did there with the knee cut, and then as he collapse, and then you use it to swim underneath. So here you're gonna go for a knee cut with your right knee. <clears throat> yeah. And now he's gonna swim over and use your right hand to come up grab a scoop grip on the hamstring and then circle around yeah um, back. additionally posting on that bottom leg yep so to, he can't uh, track you yeah and then just shucking that off it's a nice pass sequence yeah I got a time together with James didn't want to hurt me who who was cranking on steven oh oh cole during i got you yeah 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 <laughs> during the arm triangle so this is where this is where james was like just annoying the shit out of me by not tapping and constantly fighting <laughs> and not letting me strangle him and i even i felt so great here i had i had a body triangle on him a solid one too like not a you could tell him all the way up behind the knee and then it was a lot of just digging and digging and digging and, and uh, trying to control the hands. He's he, he slips my leg trap pretty well too, which is annoying. I think Austin's trying to hit the Hindu guillotine over here. Maybe on Danny. Oh yeah. Turn the chat box off for a second. For a second, it looked like he was going for it. Or is that Duncan? Maybe? I think that's Duncan. Or Jason. I don't know. We put everybody in uniforms and everybody shaves <laughs> their head. and <laughs> Can't tell. I think that's Jason, actually. Yeah. Let's go back with Cole and Steven here. Cause it looked like Cole was in. I thought he was in. Oh, okay. Steven just got his. Steven's got his arm in framing. So not quite to that arm triangle again. James has gotten his hips out. Another thing to keep in mind on back escapes, uh, as the aggressor, when someone gets their hips free, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's almost a bad spot, but keeping your, keeping your grip and keeping your elbows super tight to the body and then scissoring your hips, right? Switching your hips so that your knees are, are uh, on the ground, your stomach's pointing to the ground, pulling up behind them and rolling them over. This is this is where now you can again sit and take the back, right? So ideally, I would have, I would actually switch my legs. I should have this leg on the ground behind his back and I would step this leg up and over um, wasn't working for me that time he beat me to turtle position but it allowed me to come up and follow him and stay connected on the upper body i might have my far hook in there but i'm, I'm not entirely sure uh, but anytime somebody somebody slips their hips out if you feel like you still have a good grip on the upper body keep it you're just gonna have to learn to manipulate your hips around to get to a, a strong athletic position
Build the chimney. Wow. What was that? Still defending. He's got a like that hand fight is real. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best I could hope for with him some days is just his own arms getting tired before mine. And that's a terrible strategy. Yeah, on a six minute clock, for sure. That's nice and deep though. If you can get your right hand out. I don't think I get it on him though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Son of a bitch gave a gave the thumbs up to the camera. He told me after the roll yeah. he did that. <laughs> yeah, I I need to focus more on on uh, getting under his chin instead of just uh, hoping for a mandible strangle. Ah, oh, Justin. Let's look at Justin and uh and Joe here real quick. So Justin's in a really, actually a powerful spot, like a good opportunity. Yep. Joe has a giant space here between his elbow and his hip, which is exactly where you want to put your underhook, Justin. And this bite that you have on his leg here, with that underhook and this, this control over the leg, if you can point your knees to the ground, like I was just talking about um, on the back situation, point your knees to the ground and get your hips up, You've got the makings of a back take, a roll through sweep, um, a knee tap double, uh, a lot of different ways to, to take a, a more dominant position on Joe. He's doing a good job of, of trying go. to fight that and pummel. That's it. Yep. yep. Now yep. Joe Joe recognizes the battle. Good on Joe. And not you know not the end of the world either. Like you can still. You could still work from there, but getting your knees pointed to the ground with that leg captured uh, can open up a lot of opportunities for you. I love that you guys use that thumbs up still. <laughs> if Joe had lats, you might have to worry about that. Damn, look at that. So lost he joe was losing that that exchange right here and then he switches right up into a triangle or almost to yeah. a triangle position yeah so now he's got a trap triangle but not from the top <laughs> yeah james ride out this whole round with me on his back <laughs> we were just laughing at the end of it Great exchange between Justin and Joe. That was that was really really good. Hey Caleb's here, everybody. So that about wraps it up for tonight. Good stuff. Now we got one more round left. So kind of not joking. Uh, yeah, so Steven and I get after it. Dude, our our coach is um or or Luke. Uh, one of the coaches is is uh, a half guard aficionado, and also, I mean, all, he's a black belt under Tom DeBlast. So if you if you've watched any of Tom's stuff, you know just how much uh, half guard is a huge part of his game. So we work a lot of it at the school, whether we want to or not. Especially if we're rolling with Luke, we're gonna most likely going to end up there. It's just such a good position too, like you. Top or bottom, you have a lot of different options. And you can build an entire style around around like half like half guard strategies within the position itself. Steven trying to do me harm. <laughs> I think this was another uh, another time where Justin was watching and was just like started making faces because Steven Steven threw it on me here. He was he was really getting after my legs, and there were a few times 
where I was like wincing and Justin's like, what is happening <laughs> right now? How are you not tapping? <laughs> Make me. <laughs> yeah, like this was the first one. Like, I'm like in a. There was there was like some a bit of knee bar pain. <laughs> but let's let's look at how stupid I am here to get caught in this, right? So let's see where he has. He's got that. He's got his left hand on my foot. Foot in the hip. Yeah, kind of, kind of working towards the De La Hiva. He slips his right leg, leaving my left leg just oh, yeah. totally isolated. Nice and just, transition. that was beautiful, man. Like, with the quickness, jumped right on my heel. I mean, immediate heel exposure, everything. But I was just, I was able to turn enough, just enough to get my knee into a position where it was bad. And then, uh, and then I was able to get safe, outlasting that. And then I'm like, I'm not getting into a shootout with him right now. So I tried to ankle pick him instead. <laughs> a whole flock of birds were out. Yeah, I mean, you guys know, I'm not, I don't wait on heel hooks. I know when they're, I know when I need to tap. That could have been a lot more dangerous. I just like shoved my leg in or shoved my, my shoulder in right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you recognize the top lock and you did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I don't remember how this ended, but <laughs> Cole. So here, I believe I was working on just digging the foot out and bringing it to my center line like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe try to sit into that reverse Ashi, or yep. whatever that's called. Yep. And it sucks because I don't want to pull on his bad ankle too, bad, too much to get that, that unlocked. But I got to do what I got to do, you know? <laughs> And then I think I got the knee bar. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one may have ended in a draw. Fun exchanges either way though. Oh yeah. Steven Steven's lock, navigating lock. the the leg lock exchanges like he's been doing it for years now. Oh nice. That was slick back take. Oh this no, that's right. Steven got me. Yeah, got me with This was like a jaw breaking crank. I'm I'm glad we have this. I didn't know if we had this on, on camera or not. Let's go back to the entrance real quick. Uh, slow this down. further back so I grab his right arm and commit to it mm -hmm. you got a two on one I'm trying to sit where you're not going to sit to guard you're going to try and throw him maybe I I don't know what the shit I was doing maybe just trying to come out and around but I essentially just gave him a hook or, or not yep. a hook but um 
you know, half of his seatbelt grip. And then right here, we'll see if, so he's, <laughs> he's not under my chin and he knows. Yeah. Steven remembers what this was. He, he says to me right here, he's like, I'm sorry, but this is going to be real bad. And I immediately knew it. <laughs> like, so he's talking to me right now. And it was, it was the weirdest thing. It was almost like, it was like the feeling you have when your heel is caught on someone's wrist for the heel hook, yeah. except it was my chin. And I was oh. like, this is purely across my jaw. Like yeah. my teeth are going to get pushed out or, mm -hmm. or I'm going to get my, my head just cranked this way. Um, yep. And fully legit, like a hundred percent Steven, Steven got this, this submission. So it was, it was a killer. It was a killer exchange and it great way to end it with like seven seconds left on the clock. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was that was a really really fun roll. But Sweet. yeah, as always, man, Monday class is super packed. Really really exciting footage. Um, and I think to uh, I think this week we'll be back to. I don't know. I don't know. It's um. It shows a certain level of psychopathy, I would say. Yeah, we might go with Justin. We'll just say it's worse. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think Wednesday we'll get back to uh, we'll get back to Monday no gee coverage again, yep. and uh, yeah, jump back on our regularly scheduled programming. Um, what else? Uh, you guys know all the usual stuff. This will be up on YouTube soon. Subscribe over there. Follow us uh, here if you're not. If you're lurking in the chat, it's a big help. Um, subscribe if you like what we're doing and what else anything else it's sunday night i don't care about oh, anything um yeah cool do your laundry trim your nails don't be stinky uh let's see you guys back on the mats this week come in train hard and uh we'll see you guys on the next stream on wednesday see you then have a good one later everybody see ya